Now, does anybody here do a garden? I want to show you, um, make a demonstration of the whole idea of soil, soil preparation is unnecessary. So all you people who do gardens, come here to watch this. Let's see, I'm going to get somebody who's got some, good, got some weight and some shoes on. Here, come here, you're good. I want you to stand right there and compact my soil. We pound it down good. Harder. You can even jump on it. Jump. Really, really get with it. There you go. Now, are you noticing what's happening under his feet? It's moving. The ground is laughing at him. <laughs> Literally. It just bounces back. That's a really big feel. Now, pack it down real good. Now, those of you who do gardens, you know what would happen in your garden if you did that. You can see it bounce back. Are you Come following on. me? Now, now, step back and watch this. Here. This is huge. This, this, this is what so blows me away. After all that compaction, watch this. There it is. And see, here's my approach to gardening. Anytime I want to garden, I bring my rake out, grate it out, create a groove, plant my seeds, cover it, I'm done. <laughs> that is the extent of everything you see here any time of year. The whole concept of soil preparation is completely non-existent. You never have to prepare this. It ne never needs preparation. And you can see where I pull up plants, the ground underneath is soft. You can have that. You can pick that and eat it. You can eat all the leaves and the and the and the and the beef. Rub it off in the grass. Here, rub it in the grass, rub off, rub it off, make it clean in the grass. Make it clean. It's a beet, it's like candy. And you can eat it. And it's like candy. thank you. What is this dirt made out of? This is dirt made out, I'm glad you asked. Look at this. Come over here. People I want you to handle it. It's broken. This material is created. Listen to me clearly, from all my yard waste by my chickens, totally for free. This gorgeous black, amazing stuff that's growing, all of this is created from my grass clippings, all these leaves, all these plants I don't eat, all my weeds, the ashes on my stove, all make this. Totally free, they do all the work, and all I need for the rest of my life, my garden, is a shovel, my wheelbarrow, and a half inch screen. And I have this forever. Mm. Are you starting to connect the dots? This is the thing I'm getting to see is I, I, I came to a place where I couldn't walk. I wonder if the Holy Spirit says, you know, you're not going to be able to haul with you. Everything you need is right here. Look at your chickens. I'm, just saying, I'm telling you, man, look at this stuff. You couldn't buy, you couldn't make anything comparable to this at any price. And this is all free for my yard waste. And then do you put wood chips on top of it? No, I don't. This is finished. Why would I want wood chips? Wood chips, you got to pull back to plant in the soil. This I can plant right in. Did you start with wood chips? I did. Okay. That's, that's when I was walking. But I don't walk now, and I can't haul wood chips easily and wheelbarrow them in. But this is all here. It's all local. And so for us, of those who are starting, got wood chips down. Yeah. Mama? Have an inch or so of uh, compost cow manure on top of that. Is there anything else we should do to that before the winter comes? No, actually the cow manure, if you have it's fine, but don't don't go get it. Oh, get. four comes in the compost. Yeah, it's fine. And again, whatever you whatever you put in your ground, listen to me clearly, never mix. Ever. Right. Ever notice the creator who's omnipotent? That means he can do anything. Never disturbs the ground. He never tills and he never mixes, he just layers. Layer upon layer. And I'm realizing like this is really the, how it's done. You don't can't do it better. And when I used to do all this stupid mixing and tilling and stuff, man, I, I had really terrible results. And I worked hard to fail. <laughs> I mean, I really worked hard and got nothing. So we just got wood chips a few weeks ago and we're spreading them out in our garden? This is the perfect time of year because what's following this will be winter when rain and soil go through it comes spring you pull the wood just back the soil underneath is soft and damp you plant your plants and you're going to get out of the way because your ground doesn't need you anymore so you're we good. don't need to put any compost or anything on the nothing. top nothing the wood chips are fine okay so it'll be yep. enough by in fall in nature all that falls in the ground are needles and leaves they will compost when they hit the ground but when they come down they're, they're totally what they are you see we keep thinking we got to do something we got to help this out can I tell you something? Anytime I try to help nature, I mess it up. So you only put the, the 
the movie you talked about compost on top. That's only a people. I in didn't. The it was people in Pennsylvania, uh -huh. and that's what they had. It was accessible. And it all works. Whatever material you have will work. Can I tell you something cool? Okay. Ever listen to me? There was someone sent me a picture of this awesome man. I was so blown away, and I so honor him. This guy in Haiti. He's out in his garden, shorts, bare feet, and he's spreading palm fronds and sugar cane around all his fruit trees to cover the ground. He saw the film. Then he goes to where they're producing white rice. White rice doesn't come white. It comes brown, and they take the hull off to make it white. So in the place they're processing, they have these mounds of, 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 of brown rice hulls. He's taking that and spreading all over his garden space. Cool. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he goes to his house, puts on a white coat, and serves his community as a doctor into the evening. Hmm. And I was so back, so set back in honor and respect for this awesome man. See, he connected. He saw it. And what I have, I'll use. Palm fronds, sugar cane, rice hulls. Any covering will work. And if you have nothing but rocks, rocks make the most amazing garden space. Hmm. You think I'm stupid? But let me tell you two examples. In Japan, because they have not any organic material, the Japanese, because they're more connected in nature than most cultures, they'll meticulously lay rock beautifully around all their plantings for two reasons. One, it releases minerals, and two, it retains water. Can I tell you my experience as a kid in Los Angeles in August when I want to go fishing? In Los Angeles in August, you want to go fishing, the ground is baked. We're talking concrete baked. Good luck finding a worm. If you find a large rock and you roll it over, under the rock the ground is damp and there's worms laying there. Yeah. It says two things. The rock is releasing minerals to feed the worm and it retains moisture. Are you getting it? So if you have nothing but rocks, you can grow a great garden in rocks. So any material will work as a cover. Anything. Because it's by design. It's how it's made. And here's the word. From dust we came, from dust we Everything God's created turns back to dirt. You know what's so beautiful about his system? What a perfect recycling thing, and nothing he's made is toxic. Everything in nature breaks down and returns to the soil, and it's not toxic. Conversely, everything we make doesn't break down and it's toxic. I'm just telling you, man, it's huge. Huge. Can I? Oh, sorry. Yes. No, I, I deal a lot with uh, <coughs> bulk mulches and, uh, you know, for commercial uh -huh. uh, purposes. And, uh, when I take a lot of uh, waste in, a lot of uh, clippings and things like that, that have been taken off of properties that use a lot of pesticides and a lot of fungicides and so on, and then they process it, and then I go back in and I buy it as mulch, I place that back on properties. And uh, I'm just wondering how that, if the heat really destroys any of those chemicals. No. Well, I, they, they don't. Let me tell you something scary, and I'm glad you asked. This is really good. This, this is why I'm recommending wood chips today. Back in time past, all that yard waste was safe because no chemicals were added. All manures were good because the animals were eating live food. Today, animals are eating genetically modified organisms, antibiotics, and growth hormones. Manures are polluted. I saw this article in um, Mother's News that was so sad. This family in the Midwest been guarding for decades in this space. Went and put this cow manure in and tilled it in nothing grew. In this garden space for decades, it was an amazing garden, nothing grew. They found out the farmer had used 2,4-D, Agent Orange, on his pasture to take out the broadleaf weeds. The cows ate that, it's in the manure, and it totally wiped out and destroyed their garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you, we've got to pay attention, you got to ask whatever you're getting, where it came from, and then what I do for people, I encourage you, is to pray. God, is this stuff safe? And if you have a peace, Go with it. If you have a check, I don't know, don't. Because we're living in a time when things are not as they were before. Before everything in nature was totally clean, they're not now. And I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, another thing too, I find that uh, in various sources of these mulches, uh, that uh, after they're put down uh, and left without any chemicals on them, there are various different uh, weed types of weeds that comes in depending on where I purchased the, the you know, the processing. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'll be surprised, like, finding weeds that I wouldn't yeah, have well, found came, in years. Came, came with the material. Came with the material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, sometimes it's just prolific. I mean, they're yeah. just, so that's they just sheet the ground. I love wood chips. Wood chips don't have weeds. <laughs> <laughs> wood chips don't have weeds. They're the, they're yeah, the safest, the most awesome material for me at these times. You know, so this is... Yeah, so, well, being in, uh, having accounts in Seattle, they don't like wood chips. They like nice, fluffy mulch. Yeah, but you see it all turns back to that. You pull wood chips back in there. It's soft, beautiful underneath. It takes time. But you know what's so bizarre? People put bark down, that's ugly. Yeah. The altar is gray, it doesn't say nice yeah. nice and red. And you live with that, just which is are the yeah. same. Looks, yeah. looks, looks the same. Let's walk on down here. And, now if you haven't had a cucumber yet, there's a ton in here and they're really good. I encourage you to have because they're really, really um, full of water and very good. How much your grass dip is hungry? Yeah, we can grass dip is green because I water it. There's no, um, hardly any weeds. If you look close, they are. I just mowed it, but see here, there's, there's dandelions right there. Oh, we have a lot more weeds. <laughs> the reason my grass is so thick and green is because it's never been fertilized with a chemical fertilizer. <coughs> can, I, can everybody track with me? This guy over here nodding his head will bell that was saying. When he was young growing up, thatch did not exist in grass. Mm -hmm. What thatch is, dead grass. And today, people remove it by ripping it out. You know what is in grass today? Grass in its natural state when it dies back, composts and feeds the grass. Mm -hmm. Today with chemical fertilizers put on grass, you know what happens? All the living organisms that would break down that grass are killed or leave, and now you have nothing to break it down and the thatch is there. I've come to lawns that are full of moss and thatch and put chicken in the lawn, and in three weeks, the people are yelling at me because they have to mow the lawn twice a week and it's the greenest lawn they ever had. I'm amazed how quickly nature will re restore, but people don't get it. You ever look at those lawns that are fertilized? Track with me. The grass is a dull black green. It's not this bright, shiny green like this. It's unnatural looking. And you've accepted that as normal and you keep buying that garbage? Are you getting the impact the stupid schooling's had on your brain? You don't even think. So you spread chicken manure? I don't do anything. The grass feeds itself. I don't use chicken manure. The grass dies back and it feeds itself. Look at all the beautiful, look at all the beautiful um, prairies in nature. No one's feeding those. No one's fertilizing. They're gorgeous. So you're, just, you're just talking about the dead lawns. I'm you're talking about all the chemically fertilized lawns in the cities. Uh -huh. That you you recover them by putting. I put chicken manure on, on because it's organic, and I bring back the, the, the live forest. Yeah. See, when you put it back, nature says, "Oh, I can live here." Yeah. Again, if you start checking in and paying attention, it's so obvious. It's how, do so we, how do we get the dandelions out of our grass? You get down out of your grass with a, with a, um, a, a, a asparagus knife and you dig them out. Okay. You know what you can do an easy way, and what I do with the really big ones? I'll make a saline solution, 100%, and with a sprayer, I'll just hit them, and salt kills everything. Mm -hmm. okay. And it won't affect the rest of your grass. But you got to be really careful in the application because if it spreads over, it'll kill that. Mm -hmm. But so, so, salt is not toxic in the sense it's going to, you know, be a chemical, but it will kill. You ever notice beaches? No weeds grow. <laughs> salt. You know, I just want to share something awesome. You know, somebody did a, did a test on my soil. Well, it's, it's an organization in, in, in Montana. It's, uh, um, I can't think of the name, but anyway, they're in Fairmont, Montana, and they test soil for farmers all over the United States, and they developed the whole BRICS testing system where you test for minerals. And they created the refactometer. Anyway, the owner who, who has that um, saw my film and he says, you know, I'd love to test that guy's soil, but I can't get out there. So he sent a friend of his from Seattle over to take a soil sample. When you get, a, when you get, the, when you get the test back, you get this paper and there's two columns. First column it says desired level and the second column is lab results. I just, my report was so awesome. Listen to these numbers. <coughs> Nitrogen, desired level is 40. Mine's 120. Desired level of phosphorus. This blew me away. Desired level of phosphorus is 174. Mine is 2346. Desired level of potassium, 167. Mine's 1154. Coming down to the smaller numbers, zinc, Desire level is 1 to 6. 1 to 6. Mine's 21.5. You know what's so cool about the test that really got my attention? The only thing I was low in on any mineral was sodium. And I'm thinking, wow, God, you're awesome. Who wants sodium in, their, in your garden? That's salt. 
That kills things. And I'm low in sodium. Yeah. <laughs> I just say, wow, well, God. Yay, God, you're awesome. You know what I still love about that report? I didn't do anything. I just put wood chips down. I put wood chips down, and those are the numbers. And you see, this is why this food all tastes so good. It's that mineral content that's like over the top. It's what's happening here, and that's why the flavors are. It's minerals. It's huge. And I'm just, I'm thinking, it's, I didn't do a thing. This is just the natural response to laying the skin back on the earth. You don't need to help God out. He knows what to do. Everything works. It's just get out of its way. <laughs> Leave it alone. Um, I don't know if it's someone else asked this. So if you're starting a garden and you put down the wood chips, do you need to wait? You can't just directly plant into the wood chips. In the video... Yes, the you're so right. And here's and here, everybody, um, th this is really helpful if you have time. Go to the website, backhiddenfilm.com, and look under news. There's a section of news. There's this, there's this, there's this um, report by Rodell Institute who, who analyzes, who, who gives a review of the film, and they so incredibly explain how wood chips work. And you see, wood chips are not a growing medium. They're a covering and support to the earth. And so whenever you put wood chips down, you pull the wood chips back and you plant in the soil. All roots need to be in the soil. The wood chips act as a covering and support to the soil, but they're not a growing medium. If you saw my film, those people in Pennsylvania, they went and planted the wood chips. All the plants came up and they just didn't grow. Mm -hmm. And then they went back and did it again where they planted the soil and it thrived. So I'm so glad you asked. Wood chips are not a growing medium, they're a support to the soil, so always plant. That's why in a garden space, put down just four inches. You've got to pull it back. More than that's a lot of work. Well, what if your dirt underneath, you don't, you know, is not very good or something you need to wait like a year or so for well, the I'm going to take you over and show you my dirt. You don't have to wait a year. If you do that now, I guarantee concrete, rock, and clay in April, you'll move it with a rake, it'll be soft and damp by April. If you put the wood chips down, down now, now. And, then and in year. April, you pull it back. And see, when you plant seeds, you only go a quarter inch anyway. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? Well, I'll tell you when I get over here because I'm going to show you my soil. Anyway, um, let's walk over here and... and, I, and, and I have another question. So in here, you said it's four, four inches mm -hmm. over there. It looks a little higher. It's on quite the, a bit higher, yeah. yeah. You can see the grade. I mean, so this, it doesn't look like there's very many wood chips in here. So what keeps this the damp, you know, like it it's is? It's organic material. It's all yard waste. See, all this stuff here is created by yard waste. Okay. And a, and a whole, whole moisture. Okay, right. so you put that on top. Okay. That's, you see, and see it's, what's so convenient, I don't have to pull it back. I plant right in. Right. It's so very easy. Right. And the other thing that's convenient, it's all created here. Right. I don't have to haul anything in. Yeah. So it's local. So after you had done those wood chips, and now it just... It's such good dirt, it just holds the moisture in like the... It's you, compost. Yeah. You, look, you saw this stuff out there. In the, it, you see, you see that, that cabbage out there is growing just as well as this. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it's the same stuff. It's all organic material turning back to dirt. Mm -hmm. Unmessed with. Un... you know, corrupted. But this, this doesn't need to be covered again. Then. This is a covering. This okay. is covering. Okay. That's why the guy, when you pounded it down, didn't break down. All right. It's not dirt. Okay. It's covering. Okay. Yeah, this is, all, this is all covering. This is all skin. Wow. How many chickens? How many chickens? I need 30 to take care of all my yard waste. I make it a lot of yard waste here. So we could probably get away with it.